For a change, we go out onto the railway tracks. And that's because this model is a Caterpillar M323F Railroad Wheeled Excavator. This model is in 1 to 50 scale and is made by Diecast Masters. It is one of their Highline series, so it comes in this very high quality packaging which starts with an outer shipping carton. And inside that we have a nylon bag which wraps a metal tin. As usual, the tin is very high quality with a photo of the real machine. And if we turn the tin around, there is technical information about the real machine. And you sometimes wonder why all models don't have that. So let's open up and see what we've got inside and we'll take off the lid. And we start with some paperwork. There are a number of separate loose sheets. And there's also a 2020 version of the Diecast Masters mini brochure. At the top of the tin we have a piece of modelled railway track. And there are also a couple of simple plastic tools to use with the model. After that we need to take out the top piece of foam rubber. And then we can see the model parts at the bottom of the tin. So we'll pull those out and see what we've got. And we start with the M323F. And then we've got a couple of railway related work tools. Then we have a rather unusual piece for a Diecast Masters model. And something usual, which is the operator. There is one piece of packaging to remove from the model and that's an elastic band which helps keep the cab door shut. And let's have a look at some of the paperwork. There's a sheet that describes the various mirrors that have to be fitted. And there's a sheet which explains how to fit the operator in the cab and also how to change the work tools. Another sheet explains how to open the various doors. So this is unusual for a diecast masters model. You have to separate the lights from a molding sprue and then fit them to the model. And there's a lot of them. I'm not really sure why they decided to do this because there are other small parts already fixed to the model. And the lights are not really optional. You do need to have them on a railroad type model. But the good news is they're not too difficult to fit. They stay in when they're inserted. Although sometimes you do need to use something like a pair of pliers because the lights are very small and difficult to handle if you've got salami fingers. Once we're all lit up, we can put the model on the track, and the track is a simple plastic base plate. Mounting the model is easy enough, you just need to lower the rail bogies, and then use a giant hand crane to accurately place the model on the rails. Once the rail wheels are properly located, you can push the model down so that the rubber tyres engage the rail top. And then the model is ready for work. But like all machines, it does need an operator, and the supplied one can be fitted in the cab. They give you plastic tweezers so you can clamp the guy's head, but in reality you might need to manhandle him to get him to his workplace. Starting underneath, and the rail wheels are metal, and there are cast in details on the underside of the chassis. The drive shaft is also modelled. The tyres have got a nice tread pattern. The plastic track piece is fairly simple, and some more texturing of the track ballast would have made a difference. The rail sides are painted with a rusty colour, and they have a shiny top. The rail wheels are nicely detailed, and the main wheels for the machine are also detailed. There's a plastic support bar at the front, and the sidebars between the wheels are also plastic. The cab detailing is very good and it includes a mirror and a beacon light. And there are nice sharp graphics and other details on the body sides. As this is a rail vehicle, there are air horns on the top, and there's a tiny warning note on the windscreen. At the back, the curved body shape is captured nicely. And the smaller details are very nice, including the graphics and lights. On the side, there is an interesting grill which has been formed in a different way. It's actually see through plastic with a grill pattern printed on. There's more nice detailing on the top of the model, and there are various silver coloured components. The hydraulics detailing on the model is very good, and the hoses running up the boom have modelled connectors. 
There are more nice hydraulics across the boom and stick with soft hoses. And that includes the connection points for hoses from tools. The metal bucket is a simple enough part. And the railway tools are very good. This is the tamper bank and it's a metal part with nice tiny graphics. The grab for handling sleepers or ties is also a metal part. Starting underneath and there is steering on the front axle. And as you see it's got a reasonable range of movement. When the machine is operating on its rubber tyres we need to raise up the railway wheels. And then the model rolls along quite nicely. But life is not all about straight lines, so let's set the steering and see what happens. And you can achieve a decent turning circle. As we've seen before, the rail wheels can be lowered to engage the track. And then the model performs well, running on the rails. Let's do a quick check on the inside rail measurement. And it's just over 31mm, so for railway modellers it should fit on O gauge track. Here's a different view of the model running on the rails. And of course if the machine needs to operate it can be rotated. And the model is smooth and precise. Let's check the movement of the boom and the stick. And to begin with it can raise up very high. It also stretches out at full radius and it remains stable on the rails. As we've already seen the cab door can be opened. And the model also features an opening passenger door. And you can see inside that another seat is modelled. There's another opening panel on the other side and because of the close fit you need to use the pointer tool to open it. And inside you can see some detailing of equipment. With the machine in bucket mode you could sidle up a truck to be loaded. Or you can change the tools to be able to work on the railway track. The bucket unclips from a quick connector. And the first tool we will add is the tamper bank. And if you didn't know a tamper is a vibrating tool. And it's used to compact the ballast around the sleepers or ties. With some adjustment you can get the tamper bank to sit properly in position. The small grab is a working part, it spins around. And you can also open and close the jaws of the grab. One of the things you can do with the grab is to get it to grip onto the bar at the front of the machine. And then the machine is in a safe travelling mode. Another option for a model like this is to use it as a transport load. This machine was first modelled by Diecast Masters in 1 to 87 scale. This larger version is really good. It's a great combination of a high standard of detailing. And it's also a very flexible model with lots of functionality. It's well presented and overall it is excellent. <laughs>